again to look at our communication. And this time we are going to see how we develop our communication plan. So since all of us have been involved with communication, why do we communicate? Personal message. So the purpose of our communication <coughs> one is to pass on a message from where to where? From one source to another, because we can't find it. Okay, so we have a message from here, point A to point B. What's the other reason we communicate? Yes? To influence or to help in a situation or to communicate. Okay, it says to influence or impact. <coughs> How do we impact? By the communication we make, we would want to see a change uh, in the way things are, have been done towards the communication that we make. Okay. So he wants to make a change. But that's a change in what? Is it a change in thought? Is it a change in action? Is it a change in what? What kind of change? I think it starts with uh, a change in thought. By the message you you put out, you influence thought, thinking, and then people can put into practice. Thought, practice, action. Okay, what's the other reason we communicate? Resolve, resolve conflict. Communicate, resolve conflict. Okay. What what example conflict? For instance, just give me an example. Say the nuclear thing between North Korea. <laughs> So you talking about negotiation? Yeah, I think partly it leads to negotiation then which will be my to resolve our problem. Okay. How what else? What are some of the other reasons we communicate our work? what we want the message to do. So you have your knowledge is here, it's traveling from point A to point B. What do you want it to do when it gets to, to, to B? Um, to make people learn things that they do. If they learn, what are they going to do after learning? They will change. They will change? 
Yeah, we have some uh, change, practice, action, behavior. Okay. Yes. To improve the perceptions about a particular issue that you are communicating. So, perceptions are you talking about here? Thought and perceptions and beliefs. Because we'll see that we can communicate many things and all of it is knowledge and it's a message. It's going somewhere. But if it gets somewhere, what does it do then? That's why we are here to decide because everyone brings message, everyone brings information. But most information is not used. Why is it not used? What are some of the challenges we get as we are passing on this information? Things that are here. Yes? The what you communicate may not be understood. Yes. Okay? Yes. May not be understood. And why? What are some of the reasons it may not be understood? Probably the way you communicate it. Okay. Because you see, the meanings of words or phrases actually have some sort of a social construct. So if I am talking to, to the doctors, I may say what they will understand. Okay. But when I go to the community and use the same one, they actually totally understand it in a different way. Okay. Because I think the, the, the major focus is to people who is communicating, I have my understanding. But it's the person receiving the information having the same understanding. So that information is distortion or using words which, are, which may have different meanings in different contexts. I think that would be the possible poison. Okay, so he's saying how you communicate the way you pass on the information can affect its path. Any other challenge? Yes? The information Joy? might be ambiguous. Information might be ambiguous. What does that mean? Not clear. So you have a problem with the message itself. So you can have a problem with the message itself if you are not really sure what you are going to communicate. Then you not be sure how to take it. Okay? Yes? I think resistance from the, from the community or the group you're communicating to, uh, because the message may not be in line with their social norms, uh, culture set up, and given thinking. Okay? So why do you get resistance? You get resistance because they don't identify with a message. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with them. So again, that's a second problem with the message, where you have mainly about the content, and you also talked about the audience, talking about the culture, cultural norms. If the message and content don't fit in the cultural norms, we have some answers there. Challenges to communication. Yes, Dunstan. I also Excellent. think the person who delivers the message can influence its absorption or its, its absence or refusal to act. So the person will come into how, because this is the person who does it and how they do it. Solomon? The, the communication channel. This, this space here? Yes. What can happen to this space? It might distort the message. For example, if you are communicating through a third party. Okay. If I communicate A, and I want the message to get to C, party B might deliver a different message. Okay. So again, we are talking about how the person you use, the media you use. Okay. Yes. There is an element of the when. Because if, if I have, uh, say, someone whose child is dying of cholera, if I treat that child and I start telling them about the preventive things, that information will not sink in. Versus if we first treat the child, they see them improving, and then we start about the house to prevent. So the when. Okay. So where does when affect? Does it affect here? Here. <laughs> 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 the recipient? Mm -hmm. So you're saying when affects the recipient? So that is 
about our audience because we want to take message from A to B. So when B must be ready to receive the message and the message must be in a form that B can understand and must be delivered by somebody who is able to reach B. Otherwise it will not reach. Yes? Um, at point B, there might be misinterpretation of the message. For example, the, uh, when you send an email to somebody, mm -hmm. and if it's a long email, then you decide to pick up what they want to read. And then leave out what you really wanted, the message that you wanted to pass that time. Okay, so again, we are looking at the method. How? This time it's an email message. If it is misinterpreted, that means it doesn't actually get there. What you sent here does not get there. Okay, you had uh, your hand up. No, it, it was about the uh, audience. If, the, if you are targeting the wrong audience, mm -hmm. or you, sometimes it may not get to the, to the audience at all. Mm. Okay. So we started with an assumption that we have a message. But realize that we have some problems there, even at the message. What do we communicate? Is it a clear message? So if you don't have a clear message, it will be very hard for you to clarify it. And so what do we usually communicate in our usual communication as scientists, faculty? Yes. Joy? Communicate findings, study findings. Okay. Communicate science, study findings. Sorry? Student performance. Okay. So results. We communicate results. Policies. Yes. Okay. So policies, results, all of these are things that come into what we communicate. And we've seen how, but also we have B, where, where the communication is going on, which is also called uh, like our audience, where we are going. So we need to get this important in our communication plan so that we are able to design the package that goes to the audience. So how does the audience determine how we communicate? Their, their level of understanding, we have to judge their level of understanding so that we tailor the message to what they can understand. So he says uh, the audience, audience's level of understanding, what does that determine? So I think the level of understanding is influenced by uh, level of education, uh, think, Social, social norms, culture, I think they all still come into it. So why is it important to know the audience? <laughs> yes, <laughs> your audience helps you package the message to suit the actual audience that you're going to give it to. Okay. Richard? Well, the audience is having this. So and be able to get in front of these people in this I guess we are going to get. So if for example we are um, a public research finding and we are going to get entire people in the academia, so probably uh, journals that would be appropriate. But for example if they're just politicians, then maybe there will not be a not appropriate journal. Probably it will be a meeting that will be more useful. That's why I think for the different universities Okay, so the audience is going to determine our medium of communication. It will determine the, the package. Someone mentioned the word package. How we package that information is going to be determined by the audience. Okay, so now we have the information. How do we monitor that the information has gotten here? What do we do? to know that what we wanted to communicate has crossed and gone to where we are going to communicate it. Someone mentioned that it may be mis misinterpreted, but how do we monitor that kind of outcome? Yes? Feedback. 
feedback. Okay, so how do we get feedback? How do we get this feedback? Yes? Doing research. Doing research. <laughs> 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 Okay, so we already did research, we are communicating the research results, we now want to research about feedback. <laughs> so now take us through the research of the feedback. So there should be an assessment tool, ideally from the, from the, from the start, mm -hmm. of how we are going to be able to actually see if what you have communicated and passed on as you want it. So you need to design something that will be able to give you an idea of how well they have taken your message. So you want some tools yes. to measure feedback? Yeah, but others are very pronounced. For example, if you introduce an antivariable tax, people can simply refuse to use that service. So okay. they're giving you feedback, telling you that we don't like this. How do you get the feedback? Yes, Ronge? I think it depends on the mode of communication. I okay. want to take an example of presentation. You judge from both reactions to your presentation and the questions they raise. Okay. If they really understand, they will ask questions related. Says questions. If they didn't understand, they will raise other questions which are part of the presentation. So that feedback questions raised. So if we, when we go to a meeting and present, how many times do we have someone recording the questions to actually measure how these people understood? You, you now judge from what questions have been raised. Whether you really want to present is what questions they are. Okay. Or questions for clarification. Okay. But if you present it and <laughs> is it clapping your response? <laughs> <laughs> clapping is also a response. We need to get that so feedback. In case yes. a message was telling the audience to do something, okay. probably wash your hands every after you visit the toilet, then the way you can know that your message really was, was understood is by looking at when you wash hands, what's the outcome? Maybe the infections have reduced in the community. Okay. So you can know that the message is understood. So you should have a, a monitoring and evaluation plan to see what message, whether your message has gotten to the desired <coughs> audience. And this plan is in different forms. Questionnaires, questions that they are answering, measuring the actual impact, depending on what was the desired outcome. If you wanted to influence thought, how are you going to measure that actually you have influenced the thought of your audience? Yes, understand? I think it, would have, it would be good in that sense to have a before and after. What did I, what was my view on a certain subject before a message was communicated? What is my view after the message has been when they've been able to appreciate what the thought whether there is a change in the thought process? Okay. So that's why you should have the the aim as your primary you should have the aim to determine how you're going to measure. Because if it is thought, then you should be having some thought questions or questionnaires or knowledge assessment to see that thought has changed. If you want to change practice, how would you monitor this? Many of you do research and publish it to influence practice. How do you monitor this? Yes? Has it influenced or changing guidelines or Okay, for and example, and policy at the point. Okay, and how do you measure this? Okay, so you have to search documents and see if you have been referenced. Okay, 
Martin? You can also just observe and see whether what was communicated is actually impacting on what is being practiced. So you're saying you observe, but we are going further and asking how do you observe? Because anybody can observe, but it's only that one who can measure the observation that will have yeah. the measure of the impact. You can have an observation checklist and if you knew what the practice was and what the message was, then it's easy to link the two. So he has put in a checklist now in his observation as a tool. Okay. Yes. Mine is just a question. As we do this feedback, there is this thing of timing. Because I know knowledge kind of uh, declines with time. And yet, for some of the things, you would want them to have a relatively long-lasting effect. So when do you time your evaluation? Okay, so that, is going, to, that is going to depend on how. It's also going to depend on the message. Because you are going to have a chance to go through and make a communication plan. So it will depend on what message you are communicating, how you are communicating it, What's the desired outcome? Do you want an outcome in one day? Do you want an outcome in one month? Or an outcome in one year? That is going to be for your M and E plan. If you want an outcome in one day, and you have your measurements are after one month, you are going to miss your outcome. If you want it in one year, and you measure after one day, you are not going to get the outcome. Okay. So what do we need to communicate? What resources do we need to communicate? What resources? Because you said you need to package your information. A good plan should also have the resources that you are going to use. what you need. If you are going to need PowerPoint presentation, you need, you need probably a projector and what you use for it. If you are going to use posters, you need resources to make the posters. If you are going to use TV, you need the you need to pay for the airtime for the TV. Okay? So a good communication plan also has uh, resources. So we are going to just write here what we need to make a good communication plan. One, we said we need the purpose. And this should have the message. So what else do we need? We need to know our audience. This audience will determine the methods we use. These methods will determine our resources. And that means we will also budget for them. What else do we need? So we have answered how, what, how, where which is the audience, then the methods. So all the, the different methods should be here. Feedback. So we want feedback. We, we need to have an M and E plan to measure our feedback, to see if we have got the desired outcome for that. So what else? We talked about challenges. How do we handle the challenges? 
in the communication to mm -hmm. ensure that we have the messages go along. So let's think about the anticipated challenges that we mentioned. How do we design our package to handle those challenges? Talk about the purpose of the message that should be passed on. Okay. So one can have a and prepare the message and try to practice in you know, say a group of peers to see what information they are getting. For example, okay. if I want to defend, uh, if someone was making a grant application and therefore a presentation, just present to a group of peers and see if your message comes across as a statistical sphere and all that. And that's not clear, then go back and try to refine your message. Okay, so we have to know the challenges and have the mitigation plan. What you mentioned is like piloting can help you. If you plan for a pilot, it can help you to, as part of your mitigation plan, identify the challenges and deal with them. Okay. So this may look abstract, but we are going to have each group design their communication plan so that we put these things into practice. Okay. So we we'll start by deciding on what message we want to deliver. And this can be any message, whether it's your research findings, it could be a research findings, it could be a proposal you want to develop, it could be a policy, it could be a change you want to effect, depending on the aim. So that means you have the title of the message, and then you have the purpose with objectives, which, which you could call objectives of your communication. What is the desired outcome of the communication? Then we go through all this and produce a dissemination plan. So I believe each group has at least one message that they will be interested in delivering. <coughs> you can take through these different steps and come up here and present. So this is now time that you have to make a PowerPoint presentation giving us all these aspects and we shall review <coughs> people decide whether your message is going